Welcome into another episode of Who Should You Choose? The video series where I go through the prior videos, questions, and comments and help you with your hut lineup decisions. This is the first video since coming back from the All-Star Weekend. I uh, had an absolute blast. And again, shout out to anyone uh, that stopped me to take a picture and uh, and to meet a lot of people in the community. It was awesome. So uh, appreciate you guys, as always. Almost at 60,000 subs on YouTube. So uh, make sure you subscribe and notifications on to get your question answered in the next video. Uh, let's get into some of uh, these questions. We'll start out. Here we go. With... With Vez, we got a hey, bonjour sleeves. I hope you had a great stay in Toronto. I did, uh, at least a better one than Kucherov. Man, he got he did not want to be there. I was wondering, do you think there will be a team builder stage at 98 overall again this year? I was able to build all 490 overalls, and I'm wondering if I should settle for 296s uh, and 198 99, or if it's worth collecting the cards in order to build additional players. I currently have 200k, but almost no NHL gold players. So, this is how I would answer this question if you were going to play the game all the way through team of the season, um, at least hockey ultimate. So we're talking like April, May, and you're still playing. Just save your gold NHLers that are 82 and below. Like th that's it. Like if you slowly do that, you've seen in my no money spent videos, it doesn't take that long. And eventually you end up with enough to make your team builder cards. Cause those cards eventually end up being the best in the game when they come out. I don't think they'll be 98. I think that the way they started it this year at 87 to 90 to 93, I think we will get 96s, and I think we will get 99s. I don't think they're going to do the 98 to 99 because that was just hated by the community. But just slow roll it. Just take untradeable rewards and rivals and any 82 and below NHL player, throw into sets. May says, hey, hope all is good and that you had a good weekend in Toronto. I did. So question, please tell me us is it just a pr stunt that ea sports nhl posted on x that bieber doesn't get a player card within hut second question how many 96 team builders do you think we are getting i need to start to plan out if it's four 96s or just three so they will always make it where you have to make um essentially two more to get all of them at the release because if not then let's say for example um there's 493 overall cards there won't be 296s because then there's no reason for you to go out and spend more money to buy more packs to get more nhl players to get the 96 overalls there will be three i don't i think it will be three i don't think it will be four simply because there was only 490 uh 93s so i would guess that it's one less each time now um that would be that would be my guess here uh the the justin bieber thing I don't know, man. Like, I, you know, like part of me is like, who cares? Because the, if you don't like the players, like this is with the celebrities as well. Um, you know, you don't want to use them in game. Don't use them in game, right? Um, <clears throat> but it definitely becomes super gimmicky. I'm someone who's, I'm older. I just like the real thing. I don't even, like, you know, I mean, personally, I'm not a big fan of the Hut first cards, but I understand why people are um, <clears throat> in terms of like forwards on defense and vice versa. It's fine, but I'm not like a huge fan of it. So, uh, I don't know if we get Beaver in game. Maybe. I, I don't know if he'd be down for that, man. Uh, Team says, what's up? You're awesome, bro. I'll be in front of the All-Star. I have a rant about HUD. Here we go. Packs don't give us what we need. I'll open 17 packs and get and not get anything. If uh, I wish if I had a theme team that I picked, uh, I would get more bigger chances at pulling the cards from my theme team. So starting here... If you open up 17 packs, you are getting stuff. You have to remember that cards are currency. And it sucks because it devalues the actual cards themselves. We are not... Hockey Ultimate Team is not a card collecting mode. So unlike MLB, where you are driven to collect every card, meaning that if you collect all the Boston Red Sox, you will, you will cash them in, keep them so you can use them. But also, um, they, remain, they become untradeable. You can't do anything else but use them in-game if you wanted to, but you'll unlock a throwback, you know, Kevin Euclid's Boston Red Sox card that's a little bit higher, depending on how hard it was to collect the whole team, right? That's a card collecting mode. Whereas Hockey Ultimate Team and Madden, um, those are cards are currency. So you might not pull an 86 that you like for your theme team, but you might pull a bunch of 85s that you don't care about, but the 85 is a currency. It sucks. It's lame. I hate it. That's just EA's model, not just EA NHL. Um, I think the theme teams are almost non-existent and possible in Hockey Ultimate Team, especially if you play online. As a Sharks fan, like, what would you guys want me to do? I play in Division Two. It's my skill level. I don't, you know, brag about that. It's uh, it's actually embarrassing. I'm not Division One anymore uh, since NHL 22. 
but it's just where I'm at, and I'm actually hindered because in Division Two and above, you're playing a different game. It's so much more competitive, and you have to use not a certain build, but like you can't use 81 overall cards and get away with it because I'm not good enough to overcome that. Not like very few players are. So that's a big issue, man. Like it sucks. But if you're like an Oilers fan, uh, you could get away with having a pretty solid team. Uh, gameplay. The AIs run away from the puck or they just get in the way of play. Um, in all, like in squad battles, God, it's infuriating when they just literally rag the puck. They, they literally will rag it. Um, and then your AI is getting in the way. I wish your a this year more than any other year. I have noticed that your AI offensively is just abysmal. So I notice this a lot in the offensive zone. When you set up the overload, your guys will get set in the overload setting. So three guys along the boards, two guys uh, in the middle. The problem is, is they don't move if they're covered. There is no battle. Defensively, your guys will get covered. And you have to move the puck around to not only get your, like, you know, obviously create time and space yourself, which you should have to do, but your AI will not get open. They will not fight to get open, which is just, like, it kills any strategy. You're, you're just waiting for something to happen or your opponent to make a mistake manually defending, right? It sucks. I hate it. Um, because you need a little bit of help if you're playing one-on-one. -on -one. You can't control all six guys. And then getting in the way... I've had it. This is like my biggest pet peeve. When you are breaking into the zone and your guy just will, he has a predetermined set where place where he's going and he will not read where you're controlling the puck. It's really annoying. Auction house needs to be revamped. An idiot player needs to have a card. An idiot player needs to have a cap. The game needs to stop thinking about making money. Maybe start about people having fun and want to play. That last sentence, that's the video game industry in the era that we live unfortunately back in the early 2000s the video game industry wasn't looked at nearly as um closely and invested in nearly as much as it is now because video games make more money than any other industry <laughs> except for uh well i mean you guys can guess uh on the internet like it just it, video games make more money than movies like it's crazy and now it's about making money and it's about, it's basically been engineered. It's been around long enough where you get ultimate team. And I'll be honest with you. I think it's the, I think it's the rise of mobile games. Uh, how many of you guys, you know, give, you know, let me know in the comments. How many of you guys uh, played the Simpsons or Family Guy mobile game when the iPhone really took off? I'm talking like on a consumer level. I think it was like iPhone 4 maybe. Um, the first few iPhones, it was like you had that one buddy that had it. But it became really consumer friendly, exploded. And you would have those mobile games where you can play, and then it's like, here's a wall that either you have to wait an entire day or you spend 50 bucks and you unlock and you can buy stuff. And I specifically remember those Family Guy and Simpsons games because they were so addicting, and I remember playing them nonstop, but I worked for Apple at the time, and what you could do is basically buy as much as you want, spend $1,000, and you can email Apple in and say, oh, my, my son, my daughter, my family, my dog accidentally made this in-app purchase. Can you please refund? We would refund it, but you can't take away an in-app purchase from in-game. So you basically just get free stuff. So when that started happening in terms of like mobile purchases and the, ex the explosion of that, ultimate team modes just follow. Like here is stuff that you could earn at a very slow pace, or here is a way that you could just buy through those packs this year where it's like an 83 plus overall defenseman card when like the 90 Chara is out is not a coincidence. So, and that's in every game. Um, it just sucks. Uh, but the, every video game is about making money. It is a business. If like, if we owned EA and like that is, it is a business. Obviously as a consumer, we have a different mindset. We we love, I want nothing more than what you guys want. Obviously the more, the better the game is selfishly, the better the game is guys, the better numbers I have. That's why it always kills me when people are like, dude, you just want to, you know, you'll do anything for EA. It's like, no, the better the game is, the better I do. So, like, I'm always on your side, but it is the reality. Hey, slaves, always appreciate your videos and all your work. Hope you're enjoying the All-Star Weekend with your dad. Had a great time with my dad. Diehard Leafs fan. He really enjoyed the 67 Leafs tribute. Uh, yo, slaves, I got 400,000 coins. I wonder if I should save for Gretzky or just buy a 94 McDavid or something like that. Thanks. If the boys want uh, to answer, it's all your... <laughs> yeah, guys, if you ever see any questions in here that you know the answer to, or you want to give your feedback, please do so. Um... So, uh, I would always go with Gretzky because no matter what, he'll get to 99. 
you know, the 94 McDavid is fine and you could use him for the rest of the year, but there'll probably be another not make, there'll be many more McDavid's that you could go after. I always, I would always go with team builders and the, um, ultimate icons because they're going to get to 99 for a cost, but they're going to get there. Uh, but when is this sleeps bonjour? I'm not going to take much screen time uh, from those who have relevant questions, but could you please end this vid with the classic, you guys stay average, please? Oh my God, that was a long time ago. I recently remembered that I'm actually watching all your vids from way back in that sleeves era, and this would be epic to hear again for the OGs. I appreciate you. Dude, you guys stay average is like NHL 17. Oh my goodness. You are one sexy man. How does one get to look like you? Years and years of uh, marriage and disappointment will eventually end up with this, you know? Uh, Ross Dalberg says, Hey, if uh, I can only make two 93 team builders, should I build? Who should I build besides Arnett? Nash or Robinson? Who have you liked better? Second, what abilities have you activated on the team builders you have? I'm also struggling on where to spend my abilities. Like, should I use them all my first line forwards or defense? Spread it over my top six. So, I have three. The only one I don't have is Sallow. I think Nash scores those far side wristers almost automatically. The issue is, is that he is a, only a left-handed winger. And I think I'll talk about this a lot as the game goes along when we get into these like lower 90s, um, mid-90s cards. If they can't play center, it really hinders their value because you're going to get to a spot where you're like, okay, I have four great left-handed wingers. Someone's got to move over. They can't. They're out of your lineup. That Svechnikov and Hosa card coming out are very similar that I would almost rather have them th and get Robinson because Robinson, if you don't have, you know, I, I mean, among right-handed defensemen, he's one of the best and he's going to be for a little while. Um, so I would go with him just because there is, it's a position scarcity. Um, in terms of abilities, load up on your first two lines. And on defense, I would only activate um truculence or shutdown because it makes those two cards those cards very impactful um don't activate both on the same card one or the other and then your forwards your top two lines uh really invest in them don't spread it out anymore when are you going to get when are we going to get more devil's team builders five in two years just isn't enough just messing around but thanks again for providing this content you're likely the only reason i still play the game thanks for enabling my hut addiction dude that's why i don't know i try not to open packs fellas that's why because i know that we're just i hate pack openings because then when you watch them and you know you get a youtuber it's like man look at these crazy pulls they don't show you the four thousand other ones that they opened and it's just a, uh, oh, it's an evil game uh, yeah, dude, I saw someone in the comments being like, why are you crying about the Devils getting team builders, man? They're sick cards. It's like, bro, there's 32 teams, and these there's only so many of these cards, dude. The Devils have had enough, man. Not to mention, it's like the most boring era of hockey that the Devils played. They were great teams, but if you were alive to watch those games, there was a reason why they got so good and they were so boring. Lou just had them play 1-4, and everyone played back, and no one could beat Brodeur, so... You know, just enough, enough, move on. You know, they're different teams. Hey, slaves, I'm looking for a good left winger to play behind my team of the year, McDavid, uh, for about 200 to 300K. Any suggestions? Thanks for the great content. Uh, someone said Mike Badano or Nash or Power by Gretzky. Honestly, uh, someone says X Factor Hughes. That's a good one as well. I would honestly go with like Svechnikov. Or if you want to go off board, that's not as expensive as a master player. That 89 Yager from Nations of Hockey is still unbelievable. Uh, keep Madonna and Regeer or make Robinson, who probably still plays height, who I still probably high skin in over him. Messier would be 3C or wait until I can make another 90 or another suitable center comes out. Already made Arnett and Nash. I, have the exact, I did the exact same thing, like the exact same scenario. Madonna is the better play, like having that is better depth. But your third line, especially because Rivals Burst exists, like, your third line just doesn't really matter as much. So I would go with Robinson because your second line defensive pair is, you know, more important than your third line um, D pair. So, uh, hey, Sleeves, uh, where do you recommend going to practice your up power play? I I've run one three one, focused on one-timers in the slot and left boards with line A and mark there's nowhere to practice i have been fighting in the background to get a hut practice mode that we can actually customize the strategies the only way you can practice a strategy is by going into practice mode in uh, offline and 
when you go into the the free skate practice mode thing, I think the default is overload on almost every team. So that's why for this year I've been really practicing and showing you guys overload because at least you can practice it in practice mode. It is something that I don't understand why it's not in the game, but we should be able to practice with our hut teams 1,000%. The hits in this game are completely broken after the patch. They need to fix this immediately. It's bad enough that stick checking is completely ineffective now, hitting two. Do the devs even watch hockey? This game is just a circus passing that can't be intercepted and now figure skating. It's absolutely unplayable. They just remove the intentional speed boost. You 100% go slower uh, when you hold the stick now. Maybe it'll be okay if the stupid lunge animation didn't completely miss most of the time. Well, good news. They reverted it back and now hitting is back to what it was. I... I don't give my feedback on gameplay anymore, guys, the developers. I have learned that my own experience with the game is not more important than everyone else's, and it's very difficult to have someone who's in a prominent position in the community or like their voice, and you say, "I this is wrong, this is right, because I've come to learn that there is no way to satisfy everyone when it comes to hockey. You either love simulation-based gameplay, like NHL 22, or you like arcade-based gameplay, like NHL 24. There are people that are somewhat in the middle, like me, but there's also a large section of the player base that is sim-based and more arcadey. You want to be able to deke. You want to be able to do all these crazy things. Sim-based is like you cycle and you shoot and you hope it goes in, but there isn't really a guaranteed goal, and you're just hoping that it beats the goal and you don't really know when it will, like real hockey. So um, you're never going to get everyone on board. I think that where this patch and how hitting is, um, I've seen people on both sides, I think that it's somewhere in the middle. If they could remove the speed boost, but keep hitting somewhat like it's very like i don't know I, I think it's somewhere in the middle because now hitting is very overpowered you can have small guys run guys over like it, which is crazy to me but the way the patch was on the weekend it was very difficult when you were in your own zone to knock anyone off the puck and i think that the the fix is somewhere in the middle there so that is gonna do it for me guys thank you for watching the episode of who should you choose make sure to check me out on twitch if i didn't get your question answered here just come check me out on twitch i go live at 2 p.m eastern time every single day i'll be happy to answer a question there have a good one fellas oh you guys stay average